How can we see the invisible world underground? That's what scientists have figured out. They use sound waves to see what lies below the surface. You've probably heard of sonar, the system used by submarines to see underwater. Sonar is a very similar technique. A transmitter sends out waves and then sensors measure when and how the waves bounce back so that the operator can see the shape of the land or other objects. Scientists who study how landscapes form have figured out how to use waves to measure the shape and depth of soil and rocks below the surface of the land. The technique is called seismic reflectivity. Researchers working with the Critical Zone Observatory at the University of Arizona have used this technique to investigate what lies underground at one of their research sites on Mount Bigelow in the Catalina Mountains just north of Tucson. The UA's Critical Zone Observatory is part of a network of observatories funded by the National Science Foundation. First, the team installs long cables with a line of sensors connected to them. The sensors are called geophones, kind of like microphones for the Earth. But instead of picking up sounds, the geophones measure energy waves in the ground, called seismic waves. The long cable connects all the geophones to a computer. Then researchers use a sledgehammer to pound a metal plate. The impact generates a pulse of energy, a seismic wave that travels through the ground. When the energy wave hits rocks or a layer of rock underground, it bounces or reflects off the layer of rock and returns to the sensors at the surface. The geophones on the cable lines measure the time it took the seismic wave to reflect back. That's why this technique is called seismic reflectivity. The measurements from the geophones are sent to a computer. Based on the length of time the waves take to return to the surface, scientists can determine the depth and position of different layers of rock. They can detect differences in rock density, and they can map how much rocks below the surface have fragmented or otherwise degraded. For example, layers of rock with low densities and lots of fractures result in slower return times. In contrast, layers of rock with high densities and no fractures result in much faster return times. Using this technique, scientists can map the layers of soil and rock hundreds of feet below the surface, at depths that scientists refer to as tens of meters. Researchers combine the data gathered using the seismic reflectivity method with data from other techniques that also map patterns below the surface. Then they create composite data maps for the best possible look at the land below the surface. By mapping the structure of the land below the surface, a region called the deep critical zone, we develop a better understanding of how that underlying structure influences what happens at the Earth's surface. For example, the way that water travels through the deep critical zone plays a key role in maintaining ecosystem sustainability and often influences the shape of our landscapes over geologic time. So, even though we can't see the deep critical zone with our eyes, it still has a big influence on our lives here on the surface of the Earth.